Joined now by the one, the only, the pole sitter, the fastest ever pole sitter in the history of the Indy 500. How cool is that? It wasn't bad, was it? No, Not I, bad at I, all. I, uh, it was a nice, nice run that one, and I, I certainly when the 34.5 came up, I was like, wow, like that's a, this is a good run. Don't Neat. stuff it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, ultimately uh, to to start on the pole for the 108th run is it's super. Yeah, it's a privilege, um, but ultimately it's just a starting spot, and I'm I'm focused on hopefully being the last one across the bricks, uh, the first one across the bricks. <laughs> I was gonna say, I hope you've first, got a different first, focus than that, man. Jeez. First one across the bricks on the last lap. <laughs> ah, there you I go. Trying to say. There so, you go. You got it. Yeah, English not my first language. It's been a long day. Yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah. So hold on. So tell me about that run, because I'm curious. I don't know if people are curious, but I'm curious. Like, how much how much were you doing? Were you changing the car a lot? Was was the thing just so balanced? You were one or two little adjustments, or was it like north end, south end changing? No, lap one, lap two, it was working hard. North end, south end, for sure. Uh, it was definitely tough through one and two. That was probably a lot harder than three and four. I had a bit of push through three and four, uh, starting lap two, so sort of click a bar, click a weight jacker down the um, three, for three and four um, to get it to turn, and then I went back for uh, one and two um for the after that so it, it, on the last lap through one and two it was genuinely like sliding like uh, i was just having like little moments through the corner which felt so cool and so wicked and but it was um it was ultimately i knew that once i got through one and two three and four was probably the easier easier one of the lot so th this is your fourth 500 yes right yep. so just like t hearing that kind of thing and, you know, knowing what it's like in the car doing these things, but trying to explain it to people, yep. how long did it take you to get comfortable in a qualifying either simulation or run yep. to be able to have the confidence to make those changes, to know what the car was going to need and to be able to remember when to move things back? Well, the, this year was probably the first time where I've nailed everything. Last year I understood it all, but I just kind of forgot about the process the second, the first and second year, I was just all over the place. Um, it's just so hard. It's easy to do one lap, but then to think about the tire, like as you know, like you're thinking about the tire. You go through turn three for the first time. You're like, okay, well, my balance feels a little bit pushy, so I'm going to have to be ahead of that for the next lap, and then the next lap after that, just so you can preserve your tires. Ultimately, it just takes a bit to learn that and and preserve that in your in your mind. But once you get it and it clicks, it's the best feeling ever. Um, and I knew from like Friday we were pretty decent um thursday a couple of qual runs as well but i had a very similar balance the whole time um but i changed one line uh or eight, the line that i changed for uh for saturday or for sunday i just i was just changed it slightly and it changed my balance a little bit so i was able to you know build a little bit more oversteery than i was build tight and and that was m a lot better for me. I like the car a little bit loose. So what made you change that line? Was it something you saw? Yes. I looked at Wills overnight on Saturday and saw he had a very different line, which allowed him to run a slightly different exit line. And his car was always building like, like semi, like looked loose. And ultimately that's what I wanted. And I think that's a faster race car. So fascinating. I yeah. love this stuff. I, I, I'm just nerding out about it. Yeah, it's so no. cool. I, I ultimately, I think that just frees... If you're leaning on the front tire, like it just slows it down on exit. You've got more lock, and the the minute you can straighten that lock up and unload load the tire, you're extending the straights. I, the way I was looked at it was the steering wheel's a brake. Exactly. The more you're turning it, the more you're slowing the yep. car down, right? Yep, yep. So I loved that you posted about going up in the grandstands on Sunday night, sun's down, media commitment's done, you kind of sun your own time, and you're just yep. up there looking at number three at the top of the pylon. Yeah. That's the coolest thing, right? Is it stays up there all week. Yeah, right? it was awesome. And like I went, uh, yeah, I just, I rang a few people, I had my AirPods in and just was just ripping like some phone calls from Australia. And I had like over 250 text messages, it was crazy. <laughs> um, but I, you know, that was nice. I spent two hours up there just like going through everyone and just soaking it in. You know, it's very easy to get caught up in like how, you know, like trying to go get over the achievement. But at the end of the day, you just never know when you'll be on the pole again for the Indy 500. So I just soaked it in as much as I can and have really enjoyed this week. But ultimately, this the job's this weekend. So you've, like we said, this is your fourth fourth time doing the race. And there's a lot of kind of media and sponsor stuff that happens mm -hmm. from qualifying in the build-up to the race. Have you noticed being the pole sitter decidedly more work S this slight, year? Slightly more work. But the timetable's not too bad. Like you're last in the media center and uh, they have row, row one last, which is kind of good. So you have a little bit of sleep in, sleep in, but I've tried to keep it as consistent as I can. Like I'd, I already had my schedule pretty laid out earlier. There's been a couple of things pop up, but it's all, as you know, it's all about controlling that. So you have 
pretty good energy going into the biggest weekend of the year. We did already talk about, though, you know, we were chatting the other day. The bad thing about the whole going last thing is the parade because you still have to get there the same time as everyone else. Yeah. You sit there for like two hours yeah. before the parade even starts. Yeah. So wear, wear your sunscreen on sun oh, Saturday. I've got sunscreen. I've got snacks already packed ready oh, to go. little cooler bag. Oh, yeah. Little, yeah you yeah, and Carly just up there. And uh, hang in. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're in trucks this year. So it'll be oh, really? Of, hopefully they put like two seats down. Yeah, yeah. Just like really comfortable. We can just. You can bring the dogs? You gotta, if you got a nah, truck bag, you should bring the dogs. No, nah, not allowed up there. I oh. barely was allowed taking Carly up there. It was a whole. whole what? whole storm yeah this year because insurances and stuff like that so yeah. boring yeah, it's getting it's getting that way isn't oh it? <laughs> god 20 this is why i quit this is why i retired yeah, I, just, I can't <laughs> oh, yeah. there's less, there's less all insurance the, up in the, the all the box. paperwork <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> depends what you say though yeah no. all right let's let's talk let's talk about the race a little bit uh we've had monday practice now you know yeah. we're, we're chatting here on thursday so we still carb day to go qualifying is one thing like you say but you got to be the first guy across the yard of bricks on lap mm. 200 how's the race car i feel I feel reasonably good. It, on Monday, it did take me 45 minutes to get out of qualifying. I felt like I was just, I don't know if you felt that when you got pole, but the first practice after I was, yeah, I just, I was too locked in on qualifying in my line. And it, my, my line's considerably different in the race run. Um, but ultimately got our stuff back together and I felt really good. Didn't quite get a toe lap at the end, but our speed's done now. We don't have to worry about it. I think we've got a really good race car. I was able to fire through a few people at the end there and um, feel like we can pass nicely. So, um, yeah, I feel really comfortable. And our car hasn't changed a huge amount since we rolled off the truck here. God, that's nice. Eh? It is a nice feeling. So, you know, hopefully, you know, temps and everything work out in our favor in terms of just where we want the car to be and um, we should be okay. So what kind of temps are you looking for? Oh, look, doesn't, well, it doesn't bother us. I, I think, you know, I think, you know, ultimately if it's hot, I, I think our tile off is pretty good. It's not bad. So the advantage goes more towards you guys, you think, well, if it's a maybe. hotter track then? I've always thought we've been pretty strong in hot conditions, whether that's on street courses, road courses, ovals. I always feel like we're good. If it gets colder, it, it just get everyone gets better. So it might make it harder to pass if you get pushed back. But ultimately, when we started testing here last week, um, it was reasonably cold and, and we were still passing cars. So, yeah, I, I think um, you can never – control anything you just got to sort of let it go and, and and hopefully it works out your way so you you said you were answering and fielding some phone calls from back home you yeah. know on sunday night has there been a lot of extra media attention have you been getting more calls and more requests from that side of the world as well for sure yeah and new zealand is a big deal um i think my mum and dad have actually been taking them a lot for me which is <laughs> nice so um dad's been getting interviewed a couple of times so, but like ultimately it's, it's a big deal for New Zealand, you know, like, you know, me and Scotty, there's three of us in the field with Marcus Armstrong as well, Scott Dixon. Um, it's a big deal for New Zealand. And if there was a chance at a Kiwi one, it's, it's huge, you know, and ultimately that's, uh, that they're covering as much as anyone. So there's a big contingent of Kiwis here this weekend supporting like all of us, which is awesome. And, um, you know, you, just, you, you sort of tre treasure that for sure. Are your parents holding a big watch party or yeah, anything? I yeah, 5 a.m. or something. I was going like to say, that. what time does the race start? Yeah, That's brutal. Yeah, yeah, it's, it sucks, <laughs> but they're used to it now. But they, they thought about flying over, but the uh, they're like, nah, the, you, you've been going. They were at Long Beach, and yeah. I went like crap there. So they, they're <laughs> and like... And then the next week, you went pretty well. And and one, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, you've been going pretty good since we haven't been there. We'll, we'll stay and watch it on TV. I'm like, oh, I appreciate that. That's <laughs> good. I know, they're good. What about what about Carly's family? Big, uh, big contingent here? Big contingent, yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of uh, her mum and dad coming, a lot of friends. We had a, like an, my first one in 21 when it was like COVID year. We had about a dozen people come, and which was a lot at that time. Mm. But that they're, they're the OGs and they come every year now, which is cool. Um, and then I've got a few tag, uh, you know, tag along with them. So it, it's I always like it. They they understand the cadence of the day and give me my space when I need to. But it's nice at the, at the end of the day, you know, whether you win or you've, you you know, I haven't won, but if you if you go okay or or go bad, you can at least have a beer with them and, and enjoy it. I, that's that's an interesting part. It's an important part for a driver. Is and again, the more you do it, the more you sort of learn it. You talk about the cadence of the day. You want to share this moment with people. You want friends and family mm -hmm. here, but you're here to do a job. Yep. And it's a very different experience for a family member coming to, to visit than it yep. is for you living through the month. Mm -hmm. Has that been a, a steep learning curve over the first couple of years? And you yeah. find like you found a good kind of happy balance now? Yeah, I think last year was probably the first year where I was like, I actually felt pretty good from a balanced perspective in that regard. You know, ultimately, this is, this is not a physical race. As you know, it's a mental race. And, you know, Anytime you're sort of over using your your energy on the race day or anything like that, it can really be a detriment to you and your mind. So, 
you know, I just try and uh, chill out. I'd literally like just lay in my, my bed in the dark, <laughs> kind of weird, but just watch TV and listen to music uh, before the race. And then when it's time to go, I'm, it's time to go. And the team are actually really good. We do we have quite a busy Saturday, but that's purely so on Sunday we're ready to go and we don't have any media commitments at all. All business. Yep. And when the cannon goes off, yeah, all well, business. Yeah, the cannon wakes me up, no doubt. It's and the worst. Do you yeah. go back to sleep no, after? No. no. Once I'm awake, I'm... I'm, I'm Probably yeah. got butterflies. I can't imagine what it's going to be like starting off the poles. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always nervous. I'm 6 a.m. cannon goes off. Oh. Okay, so what's what's like, you say you got a busy Saturday. What's Penske's like cut off for you guys on terms of Saturday afternoon, evening? Yep. And then what's your kind of ritual routine or program from when you're off duty Saturday yep. until you have to wake up Sunday? Uh, normally we're done 8 o'clock, 8.30. Um, we go to a, a cathedral for um with Ro roger and all his guests about 500 600 people that's a huge deal um and we have a dinner and whatnot and then we're done and at that point james like we're done like yeah. there's no video you know i don't look at anything to do with the race i'm completely just trying to chill um i go take the dogs for a walk we actually head to the grandstands like where we sat the other night um and just soak it in ultimately i've worked really hard on the effort and and, and on my execution can't do any more there's no point stressing about it the night before the race and wearing yourself out so i'll just i'll chill out with the dogs go for a nice walk hang out soak it in see the pylon with number three at the top and hopefully on monday night pylon or the sunday night the pylon stays the same so. i love how since you've come here you know as a driver that didn't grow up here i don't know i don't know if we've talked about how much you followed the 500 as a kid yeah. maybe it was a bunch maybe not maybe dixon was an inspiration maybe not mm -hmm. but since you've been part of it, you've embraced, like really embraced the yeah. experience and how cool it is to be involved in this sport, involved in this race. And it's from the, from, you know, a, a friend and a yeah, yeah. former competitor or whatever, it's really cool to see somebody really just love this race. Is that, yeah? do you just love this race yeah. that much? Cause you just really well, got into it? The whole reason I came to IndyCar or even thought about coming to IndyCar was cause of the 500, like to, even been given that opportunity to drive for Roger and, and him offering, hey, have you ever thought about IndyCar? I was like, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've watched the 500, really. The 500 came on my radar in 08 when Dixon won. I, mm -hmm. I mean, that was pretty late in the piece, but ultimately that was the first time it got really big in New Zealand. And, and I knew about it before then, but it was just a matter of, you know, then I started following the traditions. And then it's not until you get here in like 21 and that was my first time. I mean, I was here in 16 when you're on the pole and, the traditions and racing on Memorial Day weekend and realizing now I'm married to an American, how important that is to them. And it's, uh, you, you, it's, pr it's a privilege, you know, it's, it, it's an honor. And yeah, I just love soaking it in. I've got a lot of good friends in this paddock now, obviously yourself, you know, other people, you know, I, I, I treasure racing here because it's, it's an opportunity. It's been a bonus for me in my career. I had my supercar career, but to come here and race in this world has been amazing. And, uh, yeah, I just I just have a blast, man. Like I just I, I don't take nothing for granted. Like I said, I, I joke around about having a beer and whatever, but I just love it. I have a good time. Yeah, you know, I'm living the dream, so it's fun. Yeah, and it comes across. I think yeah, it's yeah. one of the reasons why you're a fan favorite. You know, yeah, yeah. people can relate to the fact that you are just a guy who loves going <laughs> racing. Yeah. Um, look, three races. I hate to say it like this. It's not been your best place mm -mm. you've you've not had any spectacular finishes by your standards and this is your fault i'm only oh, holding you to your own your own standards right fault. um <laughs> what's it was it gonna take sunday to, to I love that. this is your fault yeah like i'm like like i think 14th maybe yeah. is your oh, best terrible finish. yeah no, but, i mean look a we'll, lot we'll of people would give their last last lap passes yeah. for 20th yeah. yeah uh but no it's look this is yeah. people would give their left arm to finish 14 in the 500 but i know that's not why scott mclaughlin shows up to the racetrack Mm -hmm. so you know now, now what's it going to take to win the race that's yeah. a that's a dumb question but leaving here sunday night what will you be happy with maybe not satisfied if it's anything less than a win i know it's like yeah. a, I, I know you're here to win yeah but there's still progress like you just want to i just want a solid race i just want to I, I want a race where I don't make a mistake okay every time i've come here i've made a mistake okay at some point i've sped in the pits I spun Simon Pagano in, in 23. I crashed in 22. Like I've made a mistake at some point that's affected me. With a, and that's not just across the month, that's in the race. So, but I know it's because I haven't focused entirely on like my execution and my processes. And, but I've got a really like deep understanding of that right now. And, and I'm so locked in and so focused on what I need to do 
I'm really confident that I can have a really strong race and be there or thereabouts. I, un I feel like I understand this race is like, I bet my bottom dollar I'm probably not leading lap one because it's just how the draft works. And I'm, I'm very content with that. But I just need to get into a rhythm, keep myself in position, save the fuel when I need to, and hopefully at the end of it, we're there or thereabouts. And if it's a win, it's a win. If it's a top five, top 10, whatever, all I can do is just control my process and my execution and hopefully we're there in the end. Has there been any conversation yet with the team about that orchestration at the front of, we've seen it from Ganassi yeah. a little bit the last few years, are you guys playing <laughs> that same sort of ballet for the first 100 laps? I think we're all like a bit weirded out with the whole thing. We don't really know like what to do because we haven't been up there for like, like as close with each other to start, but there's no discussion at the moment. I don't know whether the engineers have spoke about it or not, but ultimately I think we're very focused on just getting away to start, get a clean start going and, and making sure we keep ourselves in that, you know, that, that top position. Okay, last question. Mm -hmm. We've been asking every driver who's done this multiple times mm -hmm. what their least favorite Indy 500 tradition is, but because you're the pole sitter, you get a different question. I want you to tell me what your favorite Indy 500 tradition is. Uh, well, now I've done it, the front row photo shoot. There you go. But like, I know I don't get to do it every year unless I qualify up there. But if you qualify on the front row, doing that front row photo shoot was really cool. And I've dreamt about doing that for a very long time, having the flag over my shoulder. That was uh, that was cool. And, I, and it was quite emotional. Like, it was just a lot of, lot of, lot of hard work. Um, but ultimately, and I'm sure that the, if I'm – absolutely hung over on monday if i won the race i will love the 7 a.m photo <laughs> shoot as well so it's just but look ultimately the tradition that the, the parade is amazing um ones that you get to go to I, I it's just there's so many cool things yeah. it's like the one grid in in the world that you get emotional before the race because of the patriotism america shows and the people show it's just i can't i can't even you got to come to this race you, yeah, you got to do gotta it come. you, you got to do it yeah, yeah what was your qualifying speed 234.222 that is incorrect. That's is embarrassing. <laughs> that is shocking and incorrect. It was fastest, though. 220. 220. Thank you. Best brother. of luck, buddy. Thank you. Thanks. All the best. Thanks for coming. Yep. <laughs> I thought I had a zero. Dude, I can't believe.